of Ukraine's capital Kyiv has said that one person has been killed in the latest drone attack. The drone strike triggered fires in and around Kyiv. The head of Kyiv's military administration has described the assault as a mass attack using Iranian-made Shahid drones. The United Nations has proposed a deal to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The UN has, set, has urged him to extend the Black Sea grain deal in return for connecting a subsidiary of Russia's agricultural bank to the SWIFT international payment system. The grain deal expires on Monday. Russia threatens to ditch the deal as a number of Moscow's demands have not been met yet. North Korea's state-run television has broadcast this video footage of the country's latest ballistic missile launch. The missile is called the Hwasong-18 and it was first launched in April. It is North Korea's first ICBM, which can allow faster deployment of missiles during a war. The US, South Korea and Japan have condemned this latest missile launch. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell has said that the European Union does not recognize the military junta in Myanmar. The comments come, came during the ASEAN post-ministerial conference with the EU. Myanmar's military rulers refuse to hold hostilities and start inclusive dialogue. ASEAN has barred Myanmar from its summits as it failed to implement a five-point consensus. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol and First Lady Kim Kwon-hee are on a two-day trip to Poland's capital Warsaw. Yoon and Kim were greeted by Polish, Polish President Andrzej Duda and First Lady Agata Kornhauser Duda at the Presidential Palace. The meeting comes a day after the NATO summit in Vilnius that both leaders attended. Last year, South Korea had signed an over $13 billion arms deal with Poland. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Paris. He was greeted by members of the Indian diaspora. Pierre Modi will be in France for two days. He is paying an official visit at the invitation of French President Emmanuel Macron. Pierre Modi will be joining Macron for the Bastille Day celebrations in Paris. After this, he will head to the United Arab Emirates. Veteran news anchor Hugh Edwards is the BBC presenter accused of paying a teenager for explicit images. The revelation has been made by Edwards' wife, Vicky Flynn. Flynn said that her husband was suffering from serious mental health issues. She added that Edwards is now receiving inpatient hospital care where he will stay for the foreseeable future. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi received another red carpet welcome during his Africa tour, this time in Uganda. Raisi signed four agreements with Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni. Raisi is currently on a three-nation Africa tour. He has already visited Kenya and will head to Zimbabwe after Uganda. On Saturday, Iran said it expects trade with African countries to increase to more than $2 billion this year. Clashes broke out between protesters and the police in several cities of Kenya. People were protesting against increasing taxes in the country. Two people were killed in the latest clashes. Protests also turned violent on the expressway linking Nairobi to its international airport. Thailand's Peter Limjaronrat has failed in his initial bid to become Thailand's next Prime Minister. Peter is the leader of the Move Forward Party. He was unopposed in the contest but could not muster the required support. Meanwhile, security around Parliament was ramped up. This is because pro-democracy protesters are expected to gather. A court in Guatemala has suspended the party of anti-graft presidential candidate Bernardo Arivola, Arivalo, sorry. A prosecutor said that investigations show irregularities in the registration of more than 5,000 members of Arivalo's party. The head of the Guatemalan court, however, said that it had not been notified of the party's suspension. 
Brazil's uh, former Brazilian president Jair Bolsonaro has denied being involved in an alleged coup attempt. The country's federal police had summoned Bolsonaro to testify. Bolsonaro said he was not involved in any plan or pre predatory act to record the prime minister uh, record the minister of the Supreme Federal Court and president of the Superior Electoral Court in a meeting held in December last year. On June 30th, a Brazilian court barred Bolsonaro from public office for eight years. Moving to climate, tornadoes and thunderstorms have battered America's greater Chicago area. Visuals show a large tornado sweeping across the sky over Westchester Village in greater Chicago. Officials said that this temporarily forced airports in the region to halt all air traffic. India's Central Water Commission has estimated that the Yamuna River could swell to an unprecedented danger mark. Meanwhile, at least 25 fatalities have been reported in India's rain-battered northern states. This includes the states of Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. The southern Russian town of Neburg experienced flash floods after it was hit by heavy rains and high winds. Footage showed cars being carried as flood water streamed down the streets. Hundreds of people have reportedly been evacuated. The flooding has caused some damage to properties, but there have been no immediate reports of injuries or fatalities. More than 40,000 people in China's Sichuan province have been evacuated because of floods. Cloud bursts dropped huge amounts of precipitation over several parts of the country. A bridge was captured on camera overflowing with water. Flooding and mudslides have destroyed homes, damaged infrastructure and killed several people. Firefighters in southwestern Turkey battled to contain a wildfire. This was near the tourist peninsula of Mugla. Footage from regional forestry management showed smoke billowing from the hills. Officials fired water cannons at the burning areas as the blaze spread. The cause of the fire remains unclear. Several activists from the Last Generation Climate Organization protested at two German airports. The activists glued themselves to the taxiway. They were protesting against the government for breaking climate protection laws. The activists accused the German government of having no strategy for meeting its 2030 climate targets. The European Parliament has voted to pass the EU's flagship law to restore nature. The law would be one of the EU's biggest pieces of green legislation. It would require countries to introduce measures to restore degraded ecosystems throughout the continent. The colour of the oceans have changed significantly over the last 20 years. Over 56% of the world's oceans have changed colour to an extent that cannot be explained by natural variability. This is likely due to human-caused climate change. The findings are based on a study by scientists from the National Oceanography Centre in the UK and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the US. Moving to business news now, the International Monetary Fund has approved a $3 billion bailout program for Pakistan. It will immediately disperse about $1.2 billion to help the South Asian country. Last month, Pakistan and the IMF reached a staff-level agreement to secure the funding. The cash-strapped country has been grappling with an economic crisis after policy missteps led to rising inflation and large fiscal deficits. Japanese investment firm SoftBank is considering listing its financial business PayPay in the US. This is according to reports. The move could mark another American listing for the Japanese conglomerate. 
SoftBank is also exploring listing its semiconductor company Arm in the US. Earlier, reports had said that Arm's initial public offering could come as soon as September. Pizza chain Domino's has signed a deal with Uber. Under the deal, customers can start using Uber Eats and Postmates for orders across the US, UK and Canada. This will help Domino's reach new customers who are used to ordering from food delivery apps. However, orders will continue to be delivered by the pizza company's drivers as well. US-based crypto firm Circle becomes the latest company to slash its workforce. It has also scaled down its investments in non-core activities. This comes as the company seeks to shore up its balance sheet. Circle joins a list of cryptocurrency firms in announcing layoffs after sliding crypto prices dented investor confidence. Crypto crime fell overall in the first six months of 2023. This is according to blockchain analytics firm Chain Ana Analysis. However, the firm said that the volume of ransomware attacks and payments made as part of the attacks have risen during the same period. Meanwhile, cryptocurrency prices have gradually risen this year. They are recovering after a string of high-profile bankruptcies and crimes in 2022. Elon Musk has launched his own artificial intelligence startup called XAI. He announced this on his social media platform Twitter. With this new venture, Musk aims to challenge the sensational ChatGPT. His launch comes despite arguing for months about AI's potential to destroy civilization. Meanwhile, Musk said that he believes China might be interested in an international framework on artificial intelligence. In May, he made a trip to China where he met the country's government officials. He had then said that the Chinese government would seek to initiate AI regulations. The development comes as governments across the world are seeking ways to mitigate the dangers of AI tools. Social media giant Meta and European lawmakers are meeting for a closed-door hearing today. The tech giant will contest the EU antitrust charges at the hearing. The European Commission had previously accused the company of abusing its market power. Meta allegedly imposed unfair trading conditions on rival online ad services that used its platforms. The U.S. antitrust regulator will appeal a federal judge's ruling on Microsoft's acquisition of the gaming company Activision Blizzard. This is because the Federal Trade Commission believes that the deal will hurt competition in the gaming market. On Wednesday, a U.S. court approved Microsoft's $69 billion purchase of the video game company. Canadian e-commerce firm Shopify will soon launch an artificial intelligence assistant for merchants on its platform. This will be called Sidekick. It will help answer merchant queries including details about sales trends. Shopify joins companies such as Alibaba and video communications firm Zoom in accept adopting the technology. Many companies have embraced the use of AI in their businesses following a massive jump in the use of ChatGPT. Moving on to sports now, India are in the driving seat after bowling out the West Indies for 150 on day one of the first cricket test match. A spinner R. Ashwin demolished the West Indies with his 33rd five-wicket haul. Meanwhile, openers Rohit Sharma and debutant Yashasvi Jaiswal guided the visitors to 80 for nil in 23 overs. India only trailed the West Indies by 70 runs after the first day's play. The fifth edition of the Asian Cricket Council Men's Emerging Asia Cup 2023 is set to begin today in Sri Lanka. The age group cricket tournament is making a return after a gap of four years. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan have been squaring off in the tournament. Pakistan are the current champions of the ACC Men's Emerging Asia Cup. 
This is after they beat Bangladesh in the 2019 final. In football, FIFA said it will pay out $209 million to clubs whose players participated in the World Cup finals in Qatar last year. The payment will be made to 440 clubs from 51 different countries. A total of 837 footballers will receive the fee, regardless of how many minutes they played during the tournament. Manchester City will get the highest payment, amounting to nearly $4.6 million. FIFA has sanctioned Cristiano Ronaldo's Saudi Arabian club Al Nasser because of an issue involving a Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa. The World Football Governing Body has now banned the club from registering any new signing going into the new Saudi Pro League season. Al Nasser have failed to pay Leicester City the money they owe them over Musa's transfer. Musa signed for the Saudi Arabian Pro League side in a $18.5 million deal in 2018, shortly after impressing at the World Cup in Russia. Fans showed up at the DRV PNK Stadium in Fort Lauderdale to welcome Argentine football giant Lionel Messi to Miami. Messi and uh, Inter Miami have agreed terms on a deal and are finalizing paperwork and visas. Lionel Messi is set to play his first game for Inter Miami on July 21st when the MLS side host Mexico's Cruz Azul in, the, in their league's cup opener. The 35-year-old will sign a two-and-a-half-year deal worth $50 million to $60 million per year with an option to extend until 2026. Premier League side West Ham are becoming increasingly frustrated about the delay with the deal to sell Declan Rice to Arsenal. The $110 million deal was agreed eight days ago, but it has not been signed yet. West Ham are still waiting to sign the contract. The hold-up is being caused by delays with paperwork being drawn up by Arsenal's lawyers. Arsenal are hopeful of completing the signing of Rice before the squad flies to the US for their pre-season tour on Sunday. In tennis, world number one Carlos Alcaraz has reached the semi-finals for the first time at Wimbledon. He won against world number six Holger Rune to secure the spot. The 20-year-old becomes the youngest semi-finalist since Novak Djokovic in 2007. Alcaraz will now face world number three Daniel Medvedev of Russia. In boxing, New Zealand is all set to quit the International Boxing Association or IBA. New Zealand and Argentina have become the third and fourth countries to quit the IBA and join the breakaway group World Boxing. The IBA became the first ever international federation to be expelled by the International Olympic Committee last month. This was due to issues with finances, governance and the credibility of competitions. UFC heavyweight Walt Harris is out of his scheduled fight against Josh Parisian after a failed drug test. He has tested positive for a banned substance. Harris took to Twitter to inform fans about the latest development. The US anti-doping agency said he will not be eligible to compete in the U UFC until this case is resolved. McLaren's latest upgrade has transformed its car's pace in Formula One. After an impressive performance at the British Grand Prix, McLaren said it will develop more performance upgrades in upcoming races. McLaren grabbed a podium spot at the British GP and came second with its revamped MCL60 car. Andrea Stella, the principal of McLaren's F1 team, said further upgrades are underway and that can make the car even faster. On to entertainment now, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 has released in theatres. It's expected to make around $85 million in North America and about $160 million internationally in the first five days of release. The movie, starring Tom Cruise, has already become the biggest Hollywood opener of 2023, beating John Wick 4 and Fast X.
The cast of the Barbie movie has voiced support for Hollywood unions that are on strike. SAG-AFTRA is Hollywood's largest union. It's demanding higher compensation for writers and safety around the use of artificial intelligence. Strikes by SAG-AFTRA would force more movie sets to shut down. It is now piling pressure on studios and media companies to find a resolution. Actor Tom Holland recently said that he does not like the Hollywood life. He said it during an interview while reflecting on his life in Hollywood. Holland added that while he likes making movies, the industry is not for him as it scares him. The 27-year-old actor said that he had seen many of his close friends lose themselves in Hollywood. Walt Disney's board has extended CEO Robert Iger's contract by two years. Iger returned to Disney as CEO in November 2022. This happened less than a year after he retired. He had vowed to stay in his position for two more years to restore the business while seeking a replacement. Real Housewives of Miami star Gyurdi Abraria has revealed that she shaved her head before starting chemotherapy for breast cancer. Abraira shared pictures showing her husband helping her shave her head. She said in the post, this humbling experience is making me stronger. The 45-year-old reality TV star was diagnosed with breast cancer in May this year. Vampire Diaries star Kat Graham and her fiancé Darren Gennett have departed ways after one year of being engaged. The two shared a post on Instagram revealing that they will no longer be together. Graham and Gennett got to engaged during a vacation in Mexico. They started dating in 2017 but kept their relationship private. K-pop band BTS's eldest member, Jin, recently revealed that he got a military promotion two months earlier than scheduled. Jin said that he has received, achieved the rank of corporal after the elite soldier title. BTS's fandom, ARMY, was thrilled to know the news and congratulated the singer. In South Korea, it's mandatory for all men above the age of 18 to serve in the military. Singer Zayn Malik has revealed the real reason behind quitting the band One Direction. In a recent interview, Malik said, At the time, other members of the band refused to sign new contracts. He said, and I quote, I knew something was happening. I selfishly wanted to be the first person to go and make my own record. Malik revealed that he is a passive person and gets very competitive. Zoe 101 star Alexa Nicholas has accused actor Jonah Hill of predatory behavior while she was a minor. This comes just days after Hill's former girlfriend Sarah Brady accused him of emotional abuse. Meanwhile, Brady has praised Nicholas for speaking out about Jonah Hill. Actor Kevin Spacey arrived at a court in London. The 63-year-old has been accused of sex offenses against four men. The charges include repeated incidents of indecent behavior and sexual assaults.